Today we're going to take a look at some new features that have been added to the Alpha 5 Release 11 video player component. So what we've done is uh, exposed a bunch of new properties uh, from the YouTube Embed API. You can now start a video at a particular offset. So if you want to start a video at 20 seconds in, uh, you can do that. There's now an auto play capability. So when it launches, or maybe you bring the video up within a uh, modal window, it'll just automatically start to play. By default, it is always shown related videos on completion. This is now an option. You can turn on or off. You have an option now to show the video player controls. If uh, you don't enable this, you'll have a Chromeless player. You have an option if you choose to show the video player controls, whether or not you want to see a full screen button or not. And if you're showing the player controls, would you like to auto hide the controls? In this case, they fade out after a set period of time. And if the user mouse is back over the video, they'll reappear. You can set the default resolution to high def. Uh, this is determined by YouTube. And YouTube will size the video appropriately for the given container. There's an option to show video info. This is right within the, uh, the, the video player itself. By default, that was, is typically on. An option to use modest branding. This removes the YouTube uh, logo from the player uh, controller. Uh, it will still display the YouTube video typically within the uh, video itself, and then it fades out. And this is new, uh, the loop and play video or playlist. So now you can just continuously loop through the video or the playlist. You can choose to use a light color scheme. We've typically just used the dark color scheme by default. And another new feature is the related video playlist. So now you can specify a list of YouTube videos that you want related to the video that you've chosen in, in the URL. And the playlist can be bound to an argument. So that means that you can put in into a table, into a field, whatever you'd like. And uh, it will read from that table and from that field and display those related videos. So let's take a look at this in action. So just to give you a quick demo, uh, I've got my contacts up here. And you can see one of my contacts has a video associated with it. That's David Gilmore. When I click on that, it's going to bring up a uh, video, and it's going to automatically start playing it. So that's new. Um, that's the autoplay capability. Now something else that, uh, that we can do is um, turned on auto hide so that the controls auto hide. You can now also do a Chromeless player if you want, so you can say I don't want any controls. Um, we've, we're also including a playlist. So when I click on this playlist button, I can see the different videos that I have of this artist. And uh, as I click on them, it will just bring up these different videos. So these I've defined uh, within a, uh, a field in a table. And we have an argument that is bound to that field. And so I've got all these related videos uh, that are associated with this one artist. So I think that can be very, very helpful for people. And then when I go ahead and close that out, the uh, window disappears. The video stops. Here, let's click on uh, Jimmy Page. I have the same thing. I've got uh, in multiple videos. You'll see here we've got, I could just click on a different video and it'll just come on up. The way this is set up right now uh, is it will just cycle through all these videos. It's something else that we've added. So we've added a ton of new features um, to the new video component. So let's take a look at some of those. So here we're looking at the property grid of the new video player component with the enhancements that have been made to the YouTube video player options 
which start about here and work their way down to here. I'm just going to go through these options really quickly. You can now um, set an offset. So if I type in 20 here, it will start the offset of that video at 20 seconds in. What it tries to do is identify a keyframe that's about 20 seconds into that video. You can turn autoplay on. Autoplay, as soon as it uh, goes to display that video, it's going to just start playing. Uh, you can show related videos on completion. This was the default behavior. It's now turned off. Uh, the show video player controls is on. If you turn this off, the show full screen button and auto hide controls will drop out. And I'll show you that quickly. And then I'm going to just re-enable all of that. Uh, if I turn those player controls off, you're going to have a chromeless player. I'll show you that. Let's turn that off. So here we've got the Chromeless player that started about 20 seconds into the video. I'm going to click on it. That will allow me to stop it. I'm going to click on it again. It will start it back up. But you can see I have no controls. I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, show controls back on. I'm going to ask for a full screen button and auto hide the controls. You can set the uh, default video resolution to high def. Be careful with that uh, because high definition uh, consumes bandwidth. Uh, the deal here is that YouTube will identify what video is appropriate, what video resolution is appropriate for the container that you're displaying the video in. So you have to use a huge container to actually get HD, which really isn't a great idea. You can choose to show video information. This is titling information right within the video itself. Um, in this case, I've got it turned off. Uh, use modest branding. This is kind of nice. It takes the YouTube uh, button right out of the control bar on the video uh, player control, uh, and, but you still will see a small YouTube video uh, logo within the video itself. You can choose to loop and replay the video or the video playlist on end, so it will just continuously play. And you can choose a light color theme so that the control bar is a light color as opposed to dark. And this is the related uh, video playlist that can be bound to an argument, and which can reference a field in a table. So that means a, uh, like a grid component can now specify a bunch of related videos to the, uh, the parent video. So we'll take a look at that also. So here I've just loaded up a grid component that's going to use the video component that we were just taking a look at. And in the on click event of that image we're going to go take a look at the action that occurs and here we bring up a video player and these argument bindings are key in that the video URL is going to be pulled from a field in the grid component that's a hidden field called YouTube underbar video URL and the playlist is going to come from YouTube underbar playlist here I'm not using a start offset at all Something else I'd like to point out here is uh, we're going to take a look at the on hide window event. This is an important one to remember. You want to call the grid child object placeholder. You use that and just call the clear video method. That will stop the video when the user closes the window. So here are the fields that we were talking about, the one that references the video URL. It's a hidden field, and we've hidden the column, and the YouTube playlist that is also hidden. So once again, we'll take a look at this grid component with the embedded video player. I'm going to go ahead and click on David Gilmore here. It's going to go ahead and bring up the player. So what we've done here is made it really, really easy for you to build a really powerful multimedia application uh, with the new Alpha 5 Release 11 video player component. I hope you enjoy it.